There is a place located in southeastern Oklahoma on the Ouachita National Forest known for its premier bird watching and waterfowl hunting opportunities. That place is called the Red Slough Wildlife Management Area. The 5,814-acre wetland is managed by the Ouachita National Forest, Oklahoma Ranger District, and the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation and the National Resources Conservation Service. So this is a, a highly collaborative project. The Wachita National Forest, the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, and the Natural Resource Conservation Service are the three main agencies that manage this area on a, a regular basis. Um, that's how the partnership was created initially, so we've been collaborating with all of those agencies for the last uh, 22 years since the project was came into being in about 1998. Ducks Unlimited had a major role in the early years. A big North American Waterfowl Conservation Act grant pretty much created what you see behind me here. Um, all the money that they put into that really helped enhance Red Slough in those early years. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has a technical role. They don't have hands-on management, but they kind of have some oversight. A lot of the projects that we do have to go through a committee to ensure that it meets all the goals and objectives of the Wetland Reserve Program, and the Fish and Wildlife Service is a part of that. In the late 1960s, Red Slough was drained, cleared, and converted to agriculture land, primarily for production of rice, soybeans, corn, and milo. Red Slough originally was the last functional rice farm in all of Oklahoma. And at that time, the private landowner, Philip Hogan, wanted the Forest Service to get the property. He wanted to sell it to us. It was too high of a price tag, and we couldn't buy it outright. And then the Natural Resource Conservation Service came up with the Wetland Reserve Program, which is a voluntary program for private landowners to enroll their property in this program, so it can have conservation for wetlands, it restores bottomland hardwoods, it uh, increases diversity. So he enrolled all of his acres into that program, and then over time, the Forest Service acquired all 5,814 acres from Mr. Hogan, and then the Conservation Fund, who stepped in to buy some of those acres from Mr. Hogan, and we acquired the, the remaining acres off of the Conservation Fund. Under the Wetlands Reserve Program, NRCS goal was to achieve the greatest wetland functions and values along with optimum wildlife habitat on every acre enrolled in the program. The purpose of Red Slough is to restore the hydrology and the bottomland hardwood component that was here originally. When Mr. Hogan put it into a rice farm, um, they channelized Push Creek, they created new drainages, new hydrology, so part of the Wetland Reserve Program is to reclaim that farmland and put it back into a more naturally functioning, functioning wetland. And so that's how Red Slough was created. Within that program, the Natural Resource Conservation Service came in, built 25 miles of dikes, put in about 20 different water control structures to help um, mimic what the original hydrology was on this area. So Red Slough was created to restore the old farmland to a much better functioning natural wetland. The diversity of species is called the Red Slough Home brings out visitors from all over the country and the world to bird watch and recreate. This is probably the most diverse area on the Wachita National Forest and quite possibly the most diverse area in all of Oklahoma. 322 bird species uh, which over 5,800 acres is just a tremendous number. That's more bird species than most national forests, than most national wildlife refuges. So the bird life out here is definitely the drawing card. 322 species, uh, all sorts of different types, songbirds, marsh birds, wading birds, raptors. The other component is the American alligator. This is, um, one of the few areas in Oklahoma that they breed. It was the first area documented to have breeding alligators in Oklahoma. 
And to this day, we maintain a pretty good population of those here. So that's another unique component, not only to the Wachita National Forest, but uh, to Oklahoma in general. They have since expanded their range a little further to the west and now breed in a couple other locations. But this is probably still their main stronghold in Oklahoma. Uh, plant life, we have over 300 species of plants here and probably a lot more than that. Um, so the diversity of this area from plants to butterflies to dragonflies to amphibians, reptiles is just uh, incredible. David Arbor, a biologist aide who began working for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife 20 years ago, has helped manage the Red Slough since the beginning with the state agency. Um, this is my office, Nature Outdoors. Uh, this is a spectacular place for wildlife, for birds, reptiles, all kinds of things. Um, I love nature, so I enjoy being here. In the mornings, visitors to the Red Slough can witness the birds awaken and fly from the hammery in search for food. Well, we watch the uh, the morning flight out of the heronry here. It's an area where birds not only roost for the night, but they're nested in there as well. Uh, a lot of different herons and egrets, anhingas, neotropic cormorants, things like that. Oh. Well, this morning they started leaving about 5.40. Every morning takes about half an hour for all the ones that are going out to feed to get out, and the ones that are still sitting on nests will remain in there. So. It's really different than the rest of Oklahoma. We've got just a little tiny slice of the Gulf Coastal Plain down here in the extreme southeast corner of Oklahoma. Uh, very different habitat than the rest, rest of the state. We're more similar to what you would find in the Texas coast or even Florida uh, with these wetlands and, and the species that we have. There's a lot of birds that occur here that you just won't see anywhere else in Oklahoma. Gulf Coastal Plain species. And we're also um, kind of in the middle of where east meets west, so we get some western species here that will stray here. And we'll even get some southern species more typical we found in South Texas. We'll wander up here occasionally. So it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good located uh, place for you know, a variety of stuff. Uh, it seems like water areas will attract more species than any other area. So more water you have, the more life you have seems the diversity is greater. We have a variety of reservoirs and wetlands and ponds and streams here that uh, provide a multitude of uh, microhabitats and such that various species require. So the diversity is real good. 